one. Hey, Joe. Good morning, hey, Joe. Mike. How's it going? Morning, Mike. Fantastic. Yourself? I'm doing good. Doing good. What you been up to? Well, um, my wife and I have been sequestered in the house now for, let's see, 17 days. So, Why? Um, Why? Uh, uh, we just work, we're kind of, I don't know what that disease is, but we're, 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 we're afraid to go out. <laughs> good, thing. Uh, good thing. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. You know, we've been very creatively trying to, you know, find ways to, you know, move to different rooms and <laughs> explore parts of the house that we don't normally explore. I wish the weather would, had been a little bit better. It's a little cloudy today, but it'd be nice to sit outside. Yeah. How about you? Same thing. Um, I, I got two kids, so it's, um, fifth grade and, and uh, middle school or seventh grade. So it's keeping them, Hey, they want to play with friends, but you can't. Right. So it's just, it, it's tough. Um, definitely cabin fever. One, one cool thing that I like is that my youngest son's really getting to use zoom. So, Hey, you get to, you get to be a professional there. Um, so it's really neat how they're the fifth graders are learning about, again, look here at the background, right? How about how you're using backgrounds. I'm specifically using the background because nowadays I've got more, more folks running behind me than, <laughs> than my kids being at school if I am working from home. So I've got my office in Ballantyne, but I also have my, my office, my home office, but um, it's, it's been, uh, it's been different, right? But um, again, yeah. hey, it's what we have to do and nothing better than to be able to do with family, right? So exactly. Cool. Yeah. My neighbors, um, we're good friends with our neighbors and they have a one-year-old and a three-year-old. And, um, when we're sitting out on the front, front porch, um, and they see us, they come, they want to come running up, uh, the grass to come see us. And, uh, mom and dad are always chasing them down. It's like, you can't do that. They just don't understand it. So that, that's hard. That's hard to, to do. It's, um, so yeah, epic proportions, right? I guess the, I, you know, I've seen some articles too, I guess, Gates, Bill Gates kind of, predicted this a little bit right but um again security this these types of things again we, you've been through 9-11 right the most recently right. thing that we weren't prepared some of these things you're just not prepared for right i mean right. so we're going to talk about a couple things today again we're, we like the pti thing so we'll we'll kind of keep this uh tracking but we've got a couple of topics we're going to talk about today so the first one is Let's talk for a couple of minutes real quickly on the state of remote working and I'll push that one over to you, Joe. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on the state of remote working? Well, boy, you can't um, hardly pop up a LinkedIn or Facebook uh, post without someone talking about how they're trying to live through it. Um, I, for, for me, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I was sharing the story with you the other day and um, at, at Snap AV when I was there, um, about a year ago, we had a bed bug crisis, um, and it required us to leave and vacate our offices for uh, about three months. And so, um, you know, I've always had this uh, idea of, of cloud first, and uh, uh, it, it paid off for us. And, uh, it, you know, the idea of most all of our business applications and systems, including our telephone system, are all in either a private cloud or hosted at, you know, Azure or, or AWS. And so that transition was fairly seamless. We also um, uh, made a decision a number of years ago not to buy desktop computers anymore. So everything is laptop based. So I got an interesting phone call from uh, um, former colleagues at Snap uh, calling me to thank me for my cloud first strategy uh, because when the virus uh, became a reality and people were forced to work from home, the transition was um, pretty seamless, Mike. And uh, I feel good about that, but uh, you know, I'm not patting myself on the back because it's uh, it's something that any you know forward-thinking CIO should be doing is to think about how to insulate their their organizations. And um, I always like to, to hand off um, sort of dial tone services to third parties that do it much better than we could. And so um, that's that's one of the observations that I have in terms of remote working. How about you? Yeah, no, I think you hit it right ahead. So cloud, it was kind of a, a dirty word a few years ago, which is kind of ironic being a technology, but I, I kind of equate it to how autom automotive cars are, right? So the folks that uh, grew up in the 60s and 70s and you're able to work on your cars, it's a lot of fun, a lot of things you can do with it. But as time moves on, right, those cars got more digital and today's cars, you're not, you're not doing what you, you could do back in the 60s and 70s, those vehicles, right? I, I equate that to kind of how IT has been, right? There's a lot of folks that they love building those things and I, you know, I have a high appreciation for folks that do it, but the challenge is today's mechanic, today's 
IT engineer, you've got to be able to understand and appreciate how to build things from scratch, but you got to be able to use next generation tools to, to get there, right? And that's where cloud was. When I first got into telecommunications, it was VoIP phone systems, right? Hey, the VoIP's going to take over the world. Well, it was horrible. It sounded awful like a tin can. But over the years today, you don't even think about it. VoIP is VoIP. It works everywhere, right? I think cloud's that same type of progression, right? Is, hey, good thing that we did kick the tires and we beat it up and we went through that cycle because the world is way better prepared now for cloud than what, what it was. But that's kind of my take. I mean, what do you, how, yeah, how do you? I think that's right, Mike. Um, uh, you know, it reminds me of, um, to some degree, uh, I was working for the Bank of New York during September 11th. And uh, back then in 2001, a lot of companies still maintain their own data centers. Um, and once that happened and the world changed overnight, uh, people began to think about, is it a good idea to have your data center in the same building where people are working? And it created a, um, you know, a flurry of activity around, you know, colo, and you know AWS and um, you know uh, Microsoft's platforms weren't quite there yet, but people started moving their stuff out of their physical um, office buildings and into hardened facilities. And I think this event will shine a light on uh, companies' preparedness uh, in the same respect. And you know, are you running on-prem systems, and should you be? And what's that investment look like over time? So I think. Um, while a lot of companies are in pretty good shape with the com when it comes to cloud, I think there's um, there's plenty that aren't. So I think there'll be some opportunities for um, you know your customers in particular to kind of look at you at um, Shotgun Eddie, uh, and I know you've done a lot of that in the in the recent years. Uh, but I bet that's accelerating to some degree. Yeah, right now there's a rush on iPads. I'm getting people saying, "Hey, I need used iPads. Where do I go?" Because of the shipping mm -hmm. times, right? Uh, my neighbor. Um, he's in IT and he was telling me this was pre coronavirus. This is about a month ago um, for the U S right. This is February. His CEO had to have a battery pack re re uh, reordered for his computer. And it was like seven to eight weeks just for battery. This is pre U S going through all this stuff. So I can't imagine folks that are having those issues. Fortunately, I've been able to stockpile some vendors that, Hey, if you're, you're in a pinch and you can't find these things quickly, let me know. I might have somebody here. Uh, either locally or regionally that can help you out. But it's just, just knowing those people and being able to put them in touch. So then it takes us to the next, the next uh, topic, Joe, is state of cloud. What does that mean? Well, I think, um, I think it's, it's uh, really related to the things we were just talking about. And, you know, uh, a lot of CIOs historically have been uh, resistant to moving, you know, core business applications to the cloud, um, uh, partly because they're afraid to give up that responsibility um, because it sort of shaped their own brands and then they came up through the ranks, you know, building those platforms and getting them up and running and sustaining them. But I, I think it's going to require um, those CIOs to kind of rethink that and start to look for cloud providers. I think it's going to, it's going to spawn uh, a lot of strategic thinking and investments around how to move companies from on-prem applications to cloud solutions. Um, and uh, it kind of dovetails into our, our next topic, but it's having that cloud first mindset um, throughout the entire business stack. And um, that, that's a hard thing for some folks to think about. Um, people always worry about security and how do you maintain that? But um, whether it's running in your own facility or in a cloud uh, environment, you still are responsible for cybersecurity. That doesn't go away. Um, what are you seeing on that front, Mike? Yeah, cloud force first. Right? I think um, there's less people kicking tires and really kind of beating things up. Um, what I've seen too is just again, I think two, uh, 2008, right, really kind of put a lot of you know governors on a lot of different projects. Right, you really had to go up the up the stack to get things done. Um, I think for business to be agile, you're just gonna have to trust your team, right? And trust that that's the right way. And you're gonna have to have a great relationship with the CFO to know that, hey, this, does, again, this is for me being an outsider, Joe, maybe you can tell me something different, but as a CIO, this shouldn't all go on your budget. There should be different budgets that you have access to that at least you're working with, if it's the VP of sales, if it's the CFO, if it's the accounting team, that you're able to just to say, hey, look, yeah, that's a good one. Let's, yeah, let, let's go after it. Or, hey, wait. We don't want to go with those people because guess what? They, they were hacked last year, right? They might not, right. might not know that because they're not in technology like us. So again, I think you got to have that trusted advisor, right? That can get, that can sit there and help you. But also what I've seen too is the log jam of being, oh, well, this is all in my budget. 
it shouldn't all be on IT's budget. This is operations, right? So again, where are you seeing those budget conversations? Had that changed at Snap or, you know, I'm I'm kind of curious. You know, that is a knee jerk reaction. You know, anything that has a technology flavor to it, people think of as, as a, as a pure IT expense, but there's very little that we do in IT that is purely for IT. There are always uh, reasons that under underscore, you know, business strategy and what the company is trying to do. Um, and I, and, and you make a good point. I think, you know, if you think about Salesforce, that's not a technology spend per se. That's a, that's a solution that is targeted at sales organizations or customer service organizations. Um, and so, you know, I think, some companies, some cloud companies have done a really good job of sort of overcoming that historical, you know, anchored in the past mindset around, um, you know, technology spend. Um, and I think it's starting to show up now in um, very viable cloud solutions that are ERP based, uh, inventory, inventory management systems based, lots of software as a service options available for those core business solutions. And so it's, it's more a focus on those business applications. Um, and, and less about where they run necessarily when you're making those investment decisions. But part of that conversation is around business risk. And should you as an organization, um, you know, specialize in standing up servers and application systems and software and maintaining them over time, or would you rather have the vendor do that? Um, and that's more the, you know, business continuity. Is that the right uh, way to spend your technology dollars conversation? I think that's where it's going to end up going. Well, here's the other thing too: work from home, right? Um, it's real. In your opinion, when somebody's in the corporate doors and on on the corporate domain at the office, what does that look like from a security posture and a protection and maybe just kind of, hey, just me being able to sleep well at night compared to now, I've got tons of people who are working remote. I mean, what are the things that a CIO needs to think about through this whole work from home, right? I mean, they might not be able to do everything right now, but hey, over the next six months, I've really got to nail this, this, and this. What are, what are your thoughts on, what are the kind of maybe, maybe the top three things that a CIO would need to think about? Well, I think you got to look at the, the stack of technology and, you know, sort of that layered approach, especially when it comes to security, you know, endpoint security, email security, network security. Um, you know, the, the, the big risk area that I see, and, and you made a mention of people um, deploying iPads and mobile devices um, in spades uh, just because they're having to react to the, the virus situation. I think that's one area of risk because, most IT organizations that I'm familiar with don't have as sophisticated a security footprint or platform to, to protect those devices. Uh, but in terms of endpoint security um, and, and, and um, email protection, there's a ton of different AI-based, cloud-based solutions. Um, uh, at Snap, we use a bunch of them. Uh, and, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, endpoint security being one of them. And, and that's, that's something that, you know, that you can think about partnering with. Um, so I think it's, you know, taking a refresh uh, look at um, that layered approach of cyber. And if you're running sort of on-prem solutions, look at the new next gen versions of endpoint security and email protection, for example, uh, plenty of different solutions out there. Um, Mimecast being one of them and CrowdStrike and, and a variety of different platforms that you can look at. But I think that's where I think we've got to start looking as, as CIOs. I would also say, Mike, that one of the other phenomenons that you deal with with cloud is once you start moving in that direction, the new challenge for IT then becomes how do you integrate those systems? How do you get, you know, close to simplified sign-on? You know, what solutions are you using? Are you using an Okta or some other platform to do identity access and management? Those become the new pressure points that I think you've got to think about. And then integrating the data, pulling it out, pushing it into modern day data warehouses if it's... Uh, you know, Snowflake or one of those other platforms that are available out there. But new, new solutions, but new and new challenges for IT leaders uh, in this new cloud environment. Yeah, I mean, one one of the challenges there too. Again, as a, sm- a small business, you know, it's running a nonprofit, balance IT, and and just my own my own businesses too, right? It's sometimes when I'm selecting some of these new te- new technologies, I want to make sure there's native integration. Um, and again, it might kick out some good vendors that are doing some really neat things, but for me, I want the simplicity and the ease of that native integration that I don't have to go back office. Now, again, that probably handicaps me in, in, in certain ways, but I think that's really important. I'm starting to see more, like if you look at Am- Office 365, I think they've done a really good job of just saying, hey, we can't build this, but here's our marketplace. So can maybe you talk about, what about cloud as it as it relates in software as platform as a service, right? I guess is that, I don't know if that's what you'd really call it, but 
you know, again, are, are you going to start, start seeing, hey, these marketplaces being a little bit more diverse? Like, hey, go on to Microsoft 365. Now you got three flavors of ERP that you can choose from. And guess what? It's organic. So you should just kind of, you know, be able to click and jump in, right? I mean, what are, what are your thoughts around that? Well, I'm seeing that actually. It's it's both platform and software as a service. Um, uh, we use a platform as a service, or did uh, when I was there, uh, uh, HCL's um, WebSphere Commerce, and their their ecosystem now with third party platforms that are available uh, is 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 much richer uh, than it has been in the past. So you can pick and choose various components um, for search engine optimizations, things of that nature. Um, even with uh, inventory management solutions, uh, uh, familiar with a software as a service version of Manhattan scale. Um, and that can integrate into many different ERPs, including Office um, Dynamics 365, Microsoft's ERP in the cloud platform. So those options now are, are starting to surface and more the more sophisticated vendors and the more progressive vendors are starting to offer that application suite that you're talking about, that um, application store where you can go at, buy add-in modules and that sort of thing. So I think that's just gonna become the norm and I think that um, progressive vendors that are um, you know, in the cloud, either as platform or software as a service are gonna start to offer those things in, in more, uh, and, uh, and more uh, frequency. All right, next topic, health and wellness, right? How are you staying sane through all this? That's a great question, Mike. Um, I, I know you and I have shared some funny videos, probably not appropriate uh, in some cases to share some of those here. Hey, but You're from Minnesota. You get real cat <laughs> fever, Minnesota. So you're, 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 you've, you've got a good uh, history there from uh, being up north, right? So Yeah, well, it's, you know, I think it's, um, you, you have to have an intention to to try to you know find some humor and find some comic relief, or just some zen space to kind of just decompress. Uh, I know for myself, Mike, I um, in the first week or so of of being here at home, um, after the 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 virus sort of took hold here in the U.S., I I, I was glued to the the news uh, every day. I mean, I had it on the background and. I realized that my intensity and my stress levels were sort of climbing as the days went on. And I finally realized like I should stop watching this because I'm not really learning anything new. And I'm, I'm here in the house and that's, you know, you could, I could argue with that reality if I wanted to, but that's just going to bring frustration and, and, uh, and more stress. So I, I purposely now, you know, limited myself to once a day, uh, just to kind of check in. And I try not to watch the presidential briefing um, in, the, in the evenings, because that makes me crazy watching that. But that's my own personal problem. But, uh, but I think, in a, you know, just sharing uh, with your friends and colleagues in the community, um, interesting stories, funny stories. Uh, and we'll talk about one thing that you and I are doing later in the week to, uh, to try to have some fun with our own community here. How about you, Mike? Uh, I mean, just fortunately, I, I've been in a cadence for the last couple of years of, you know, disruption, being able to move around and it's hard, right? Going from an office setting to working from home, it, it, it definitely is a big adjustment. So I'm feeling for the folks that this is, this is out of sort, out of norm. Um, they might not have the tools, they might not have the resources, right? And the key thing I think there is you've got to invest in yourself, right? So again, let's look at the simple things. I've got a monitor that's a wide screen that you get at Best Buy for $200 and I can split it up into two screens, split it up into four screens. The nice thing is it's one monitor and I can use it for multiple things, right? Just the little things like $200 is nothing in regards to something you're gonna be using for the next four or five years, right? Right. Um, I've got a microphone. I use a, a nice Yeti, a blue Yeti microphone. It helps with podcasting. These podcasters have been falling and you're doing my own here, right? Cause we've got two, I got two going on right now, one with you. And it's just, if you use the right tools to last for a long time, again, just think about the hammer that you have in your garage, right? It's like, okay, you probably buy one hammer probably for your lifetime. You buy the right one, you know, you don't have to go cheap. Just, just buy something that, that you, that's quality, right? Same thing. I got a nice webcam. So it's, that's kind of kept me sanity. So now that I have the right tools for my office, I can enjoy taking five minutes off here, taking 10 minutes off there, go walk the dog. I'm fortunate that our neighborhood has walking trails so I can walk. So just doing that. And then also I think what you're doing is just having, um, you know, cause everybody's just so busy with work. How do you kind of make this real too? And just, just sharing more with family and friends and saying, Hey, how are you doing? Reaching out to people that I haven't reached out to in a while and just try to keep, keep things moving. Um, but also from a business perspective, it's also changed how, how I go about my business going forward. I launched three new businesses last week. 
just because of the tools that I've invested in and it's stuff that I know I can help people out. So um, yeah, that's a lot there, but I think you guys got to keep your mind busy. If you again, yeah. having fever, being from the North, uh, the worst thing was just not being able to be, to be busy. And again, do a little bit of electronics, do a little reading, um, yeah. you know, kind of mix it up and keep it fresh. Yeah. I'm actually doing some online classwork right now. Um, okay. trying to teach myself some new skills. So that's, that's been fun. Um, and I've actually, the time flies, um, not something I would have probably considered, uh, but given, um, you know, got nothing but time on my hands here <laughs> to, to, to think about these things. It's been good. Yeah. What, one of the things, uh, that we got was like a, the kids were like, Hey, a scooter. Cause my kids use scooters and I'm using a bike and we went fishing. I was using my longboard skateboard, but I'm like longboard skateboards, they can be, there's a lot of injuries with those things. Not the, not the best tool. Yeah, you wouldn't want to end up in the hospital, Mike. Yeah. Not the, this day. So end up getting a, a an adult like scooter. And uh, I just happened to look around and they're using these scooters uh, in Alaska during the summer months to train their dogs. So there's a thing mm. called mushing. Um, yeah. So people will, will use these leashes, special leashes with their dogs and I've got a German short hair pointer and that's one of the dogs that they use uh, for the, for these summer ones. Right. So I kind of geeked out on that. So I'm learning some new skills, right. Just in case if, Hey, the gas shuts down, I can get on my, my GSP <laughs> and she can take me to the store and get there you me. go. So. Love it. All right. Next one impact on the workforce. So one that I'll ask you first kick it off is okay. Today's mindset I got to imagine some of these people are thinking about cutbacks and layoffs, but also from a CIO, how are you going to build your team, right? Mm -hmm. If you, maybe you had headcount or maybe you do have headcount, what's, what, what are you thinking now in regards to building a team? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's going to force a lot of uh, new thinking around that. I mean, some companies, I know a couple that are um, all virtual uh, and they don't have employees that are, they don't have a building. Uh, the BRM Institute, for example, is is that way, and so um, that's that's something that they've been used to um, uh, for many years, and I think that's going to become more the norm. The gig economy, I think you're going to have more gig workers coming out of this whole phenomenon. I think um, you and I were talking before we started the podcast that one of the implications of this uh, virus is you're seeing unemployment rates rise pretty dramatically. Uh, yesterday, the report was some three million plus new um, unemployed uh, workers. Uh, number is probably a lot higher. And I think, you know, like we saw in 2008, the, the workforce will not come back fully uh, right away. Um, you know, I think comp companies are going to get used to working with fewer resources. Um, it's going to put a lot more pressure on IT organizations to do more with less. Uh, that's why I think cloud first and finding partners and platform and software as a service become more important uh, for those CIOs that haven't adopted it uh, fully. Um, and it's going to require that you learn how to work uh, with remote workers. Um, you have to get comfortable with not being able to walk down the hallway and um, stop in a person's cube or office uh, to to get to know them. And so I don't. That makes a lot of people, I would say, nervous uh, because they don't really know how productive people are. What are you seeing in that area, Mike? I think you're going to have to do this right again. I I, I call and again, you've probably heard me say it before, but doing these video meetings in the beginning, it's almost like you're in an elevator. It's awkward. You don't want to scratch your face. And I know there's a viral video out there about somebody on zoom that, you know, a little ba bathroom incident, but you I know, I saw hey, that. Thanks for sharing that. That did make me just, laugh. Just, just laugh. Hey, have fun with it. I mean, I know corporate America gets so tight on all these things and it's just loosen up a little bit, right? It, it, it doesn't really hurt. I mean, it, more, more you tighten it up during these times, it makes it, makes it worse. Right. So the key thing is just, if you keep going through this thing, they become muscle memory, right? Like again, I got to learn how to do these virtual screens. So now you won't see my kids go in the bathroom behind me, hopefully <laughs> and, and everything else. But um, I think again, staff wise, you've got to be getting comfortable. I think you have to look at today, how I look at as a front entre entrepreneur, is you have to look at it, all of this as an, op, as an opportunity, right? The cool thing about tech, where we're at is, if you figured it out, it's great, you're gonna have a great run, you never know how long that run is, and if you didn't figure it out, don't worry, you're gonna have an interruption like this, and you're gonna get a retake, right? So that's kind of the, the cool thing that I love about being in the technology sector. Remember, um, it wasn't that many years ago where, if you remember the whole Yahoo thing where they, they decided that, the work from home wasn't a good idea and they, they forced everyone to come back in. It's just so funny how things sort of circle around again. Well, that's uh, or, productivity tools, right? So yeah. 
I think a good thing there. So I, I they got a friend uh, in the business. We're a couple of us entrepreneurs. We get together every other week and just talk about what's going on in technology. What are they seeing? He's specific, he's in um, Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. The reason why I like that is because that's just the center of just knowledge and new things. What's going on in Texas? They can be ahead of uh, stuff that I see in the Carolinas. And then our other friend is in California. There, you know, a lot of the stuff they do is bleeding edge. I'll hear stuff from him and it'll trickle down to us in two and three years. So it's kind of nice to hear what these guys are going through. And one thing that he showed, again, where I sit from a sales and and marketing perspective. So if you're in sales and marketing, how are you going to make sure that your team is actually working and do what they do, right? Again, as a CIO, you've got to be able to have these conversations with you. So two years ago, we were doing a pen test and I was asking this pen tester, they're world renowned. You wouldn't, you can't find them. Uh, they're just, they're in, if you're in the right circles, you know who these folks are, but their whole, the whole uh, cybersecurity model is, is bounties, right? And doing these different bounties um, really makes you successful, right? So they were able to get productivity. And what he was saying is like, look, I've got my teammates and they're doing A, B, C, and D. Here are my A players, here are my B players, and here are my C players, but they're getting, they're being productive, right? So this was kind of cool. I saw this tool and it's again, now you can match up. It is big brother, but you can match up virtually what your team's doing on email, what they're doing with Salesforce or your CRM right. phone yeah. calls. And it kind of gives that manager, that leader, okay, here's productivity. But if you think about it, that should match your KPIs that you can go to HR and say, Hey, look, we either got to compensate them accordingly. And when they say, Hey, you're only getting X amount of dollars because guess what? Here's your productivity. You could make three X, but there's, there's a productivity. So again, I know I said, I talked a lot there from a sales perspective. It shouldn't just be quota, especially today. If people aren't buying, that's not fair to me. You know, I'm still talking to my clients, but they're not buying, you know, from a corporate perspective, how are you going to judge that? I could see the same, you know, how would you do productivity for it, Joe? I mean, it's gotta be tough, right? Yeah. It's always been sort of an elusive, difficult topic to measure. Um, One way to do it is, you know, you can certainly count tickets and that sort of thing. That's sort of the traditional fallback that we do. You know, how, how, what's throughput, how many new ones are coming in, how many are closed, what what does that ratio look like? Um, Uptime, all of those sorts of things. But those, those oftentimes don't have any meaning to anyone outside of IT. So, so business value uh, metrics are better. And I always like to go to, um, you know, look at the investments that IT has undertaken. What projects are you working on, whether it's uh, an investment for the sales organization or an investment in the ERP system? What are those uh, business outcomes do you expect to get from those investments? That's the best way to sort of identify, you know, look at what's in the portfolio of projects and what value do they bring and in sort of dollars and cents form. Uh, that's a big way to, to kind of, I think, um, really get your head around um, uh, how how IT organizations are are adding value to the company. Uh, so let's you know, talk about the, you know, the, the best CIOs that I've seen out there, the ones that are most recognized, including yourself. Not only are you you thinking about operations, operations is really easy and, and kind of fun, right, for a lot of CIOs. But the, the advanced CIOs I see that they are actually taking a stake in the ownership of how can they grow sales? How can they make these different digital type products? So could you talk a little bit more about what's this, you know, the next phase should be something probably, we've talked about this, right? A virtual or online services model, right? What does that stack look like? What's the, what's the new right now, the virtual and online business model that you see? Um, if from my own business, it's, um, you know, I, I'm doing a lot uh, in terms of coaching and mentoring online. Um, uh, virtual CIO services, uh, those sorts of things are happening. Um, you know, CIOs um, yeah, often sort of feel like lone soldiers. So I, I see more and more CIOs reaching out and say, hey, I need that trusted advisor I can talk to that has my back. Um, you know, I'd have no one to, to share or talk talk to about this issue or that issue. and Or can you help me find someone who's got insights into this problem or that problem. So I see a lot more um, uh, IT leaders sort of leaning on the marketplace and colleagues and trusted colleagues um, to kind of get through the day. Um, but I, I do think um, in terms of the virtual world, uh, you know, there's there's definitely um, a major f- uh, push for, you know, uh, being in the cloud with all your business applications. Um, and I think that transition is going to force a lot of new thinking around how do you shape demand and what things do you work on and how do you, how do you make those decisions? And it's going to put IT into an interesting 
uh, 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 driver's seat, um, I'll say, uh, because you're going to have an opportunity to kind of help shape that demand and help uh, business owners within your organization really think through um, what value they hope to get from an investment in, in a business application and how do you weigh that versus the other ideas that are coming in. So the, the whole notion of value uh, shaping and, and driving demand and, you know, delivering on, you know, sort of company promise and company strategy. Those are the things that I think are going to take much more of a prominent um, focus in companies in this new virtual world. No, I, I think that's, that's great. Yeah, you, you've got to be thinking about what are, how are you going to deliver new products um, that are going to be of value? And again, with virtual, how are you going to, you know, I got to, that supply chain has got to be interesting, right? I mean, it, those have got to be some tough conversations uh, from your book right behind you, IT partnerships. One of the things that you talk about is what is your short-term strategy? What's your long-term strategy, right? I think that's right. really important. So I guess to yeah. kind of to cap that, like what is today's short-term strategy, right? Is it, what, what's the time frame that you see on that compared to long term? Has that changed because of today's coronavirus? Yeah, you know, I think our planning cycles, you know, we used to do these five year plans. I don't see too many people focusing on five year plans. They may have sort of an overarching, you know, schematic or a theme thematic plan that shows, shows where you'd like to go. I mean, Amazon's great at developing these seven year plans. But for most businesses, you know, the planning horizon, you might have a, a game plan that you want to achieve, there may be some, you know, market penetration metrics or revenue growth metrics or entering a new market metrics, that, that sort of thing that you set out a goal for for the next year, say 18 months. But what you do inside that time frame has become much shorter. So one of the, uh, I see things done in a quarterly cycle now, you know, you tee up investments that fit that st strategic mindset uh, or strategic themes, and then you tee up projects that, you know, you tr hope to get done in that 10 week period or, or quarter uh, length period. And then you reassess where you're at. Um, and then you, you sort of tee up the next set of investments and or, or you decide, boy, that one we thought was going to drive a lot of value didn't really drive that value. Let's stop investing in that one and let's move to plan B. So I think the cycle, the refresh cycle is going to be shorter. I think a lot of companies are, are moving towards like a quarterly cycle where you, you, you try to get projects to fit within that window. Scaled Agile Framework is one of those um, that I see being um, adopted. That's got some pros and cons with it, but if you do it well, you're looking at um, every 10 weeks, you're looking at queuing up new projects that go into the sprint cycle. And, um, you know, the, the challenge with that is you've got to have a pretty crystallized strategy on where you want to go as a company. So I think it's a, it's a shorter cycle. I mean, look at what happened here. All of a sudden, companies had to stop investing in, you know, maybe some longer term things and get their, you know, work at home uh, technology platform up and running very, very quickly uh, when they hadn't really uh, thought to accelerate that pr pr prior to the work from home phenomenon that we're facing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's critical, right? Um, so, I mean, I guess to kind of, kind of wrap things up in regards to, you know, our, our thing. So we've got this uh, virtual um, CXO underground happy hour. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. You know, I was um, chatting with you the other day, Mike, and I thought, you know, part of the whole, how do we stay sane during this crisis? I think, you know, it'd be great if we could get um, some of the, our colleagues from the, around the community uh, to join us for, uh, uh, you know, a casual conversation next Friday, uh, April 3rd on four o'clock. So if you're interested in partaking in that, head to cxounderground.com and, and register on the virtual uh, happy hour tab. Uh, and we'd love to have you there. It's just, it's, it's not intended to be a very structured thing. Um, but we would just love to build a chat with our colleagues. This, this is a time where I think as a community, we need to stay together and have each other's back. And this is just a way for us to do that as CXO Underground. Yeah, no, that's great. I think it's just another opportunity, right? Hey, how you got to think about uh, the, the new world that we're in. So we wish everybody healthy and, and, and safe access out there. In regards to Joe, anything that you want to plug, anything that you're doing here, any keynote speaking or anything out there that we could plug for you? Well, I had a, a number of keynotes that, that have been, gotten postponed or canceled <laughs> just because of the virus. But um, I am doing, um, I'm going to be doing some CIO mentor uh, free webinars on various topics. One is um, I've done um, uh, one um, uh, keynote that I've been asked to do a number of times in the city is uh, on something called um, Leadership Beyond Profit. So I'm going to do a, a free webinar here in the next few weeks. I'll, I'll get that posted up and let people come. Um, and 
um, I've been asked to do a couple other things on uh, personal accountability. So there's a few, a few topics that I'll be posting um, notices on. And if you're, anybody's welcome to come, they don't cost anything. They're free. Oh, How about you? Great. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been doing a lot more virtual things today. So I've been posting a lot more to my shotgun Eddie uh, TV uh, YouTube channel. And part of that is uh, a business that I started. It's called tech buyer tech buyer.io. So again, it's, more of the branding of, hey, virtual services. Uh, if you're a tech buyer and you need something, go to techbuyer.io. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing right now is texting, right? Is mm. there's a security chat app that, that we, pull, we pulled up. We're seeing some C-levels looking to use this because again, Slack's not that, um, it's not as secure as you think it is, neither is Teams. And if you, know, you have some sensitive information, right? Maybe you're talking about a merger and acquisition. Maybe you're talking about terminations. Mm those types of information you don't want to have on those types of tools uh, because you might have inside parties that are looking at it that don't, that should be look at it. Right. Um, so right. we're doing a lot of, a lot of demos for that through this client. I was able to secure these folks a few, a few months ago. So um, again, just, just doing tech buyer news. Uh, so if you have interest in checking out some of the news, I'm doing weekly uh, YouTube videos there. Fantastic. Well, Mike, it's been great as always. Um, stay safe and uh, to our listeners, I hope you all are safe and sound and reach out to Mike or I if you need any help at all. We're, we're more than happy to help. And it doesn't mean uh, that you can't work with us just because you can't be with us physically. And we're, we're available online and virtually um, just about any time around the clock. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. You have a good weekend. Thank you. All right, you too. Take care.